Guten Abend, grüße miteinander. <laughs> uh, this is very another nervous evening um, after last Friday, and I guess some of you have already seen my speech at the Vernissage, so it gives me much more burden this uh, at this place. Um, and also thank you very much for coming here despite the bad weather. Um, well, uh, as announced, I'm going to have the speech in um, in, in in English, and it's also not very, un it's, it's, this, this lecture is very unusual for me because mostly I talk about in lectures about my own, own works, about what I'm doing and what I'm researching, but this, uh, today's lecture is actually focusing on your Hochli book design and especially for local people here in St. Gallen, which makes me much more nervous actually, <laughs> so yeah. So bear with me my, my, with my English and also uh, I, I hope that this could be an, 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 a nice discussion about a nice chat between you and also between Korean graphic community and uh, in be between me as well. So I have prepared here an, an English script and so I'm going to read this aloud. And please just tell me if you don't understand or if I'm too fast, just tell me, please slow down also, <laughs> something like that. Okay. Uh, my name is, um, yes, Kei Jun. Uh, actually, my, my Korean real name is pronounced Chon Ka Gyeong. So in Korean, you, you uh, pronounce the, the family name first. The family name comes first, and my, in, in, my Korean name is Ka Gyeong. But when I was in Switzerland, like a long time ago, my friends could not pronounce my name properly, so I was really getting nervous and angry about it, and just, I, I, I just told them, just call me K. So that's why my name, my name abroad has become K. So I'm a design writer, just as um, Rupert Karkofen has introduced me, and also publisher of Aprisno Press, uh, which is very small independent publishing house uh, concentrating on photo books. And I arrived just last Thursday and had a tremendous time at Tipo San Gallen. It was very nice. And currently I'm staying in Zurich and have come back to St. Gallen for this lecture again. Uh, before I go into the main part of the lecture, I'd like to mention briefly that today's lecture um, event is very meaningful for me in many ways. And of course, this is a huge honor. So, okay. Here, <laughs> you see very live um, pictures. Um, uh, three pictures which I took just uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday. First of all, when I was young, uh, I could never have imagined that I would come to a country that was like my second home, second home and give a lecture on design. I lived in Zurich from 1989 to 1993 for four years and went to Sekundarschule and Kantonschule in my teens. And not to mention that those years had a huge impact in, on my life since I was a teenager. So you see, um, I, I just met a couple of days ago on Sunday when I went back to Zurich, I saw my old friend Janine, um, we, with whom I went to school and came back home like when we were like 15 or 16 years old. And then I went, I, I went to the old house, the yellow one, where I used to live for four years. And on the right side, you see another picture. Um, there, I, I went to school for um, one and a half years. Uh, it, it was Canton Schule Engen, one of my best years, actually. No. <laughs> and second, as said, as said, this lecture is really a great honor for me. And the year I first met Jo Sochli was in 2011. Uh, at the time, I was preparing a book called World's Ten Book Designers, and actually I told about this at the Vernissage as well, but I, I think there will be some people who come here for the first time. So I came to Switzerland to have an interview with, uh, with Jos Hochli, and I still cannot forget the kindness of Jos Hochli who waited for me on the platform of St. Gallen Station and picked me up to give me a ride to his place. And that was when my when my when our friendship with him uh, when our friendship began, and since then we have been keeping in touch. And now and then, Yosohli kindly gave me, he sent me books from St. Gallen to Switzerland, uh, to, to, from St. Gallen to Korea, and each of which was really a wonderful inspiration for me. Like some several, several copies from Tipo Gron, uh, Tipo Tron series and Aus Edition Auschwitz series. And I, I also sent him um, some books that I edited and published in my own publishing house. And the sincere comments he gave me uh, was uh, really a huge encouragement indeed. Therefore, I am very happy to have come back to my second homeland and have a lecture on Jos Hochli, whom I respect really a lot 
And not to forget to say I'd like to express my deep gratitude to Rupert Karkofen for inviting me here, and also Roland Stieger for recommending me as a lecturer, and, and also Joost and Ursula Hochli, without whom this time and event would not have come true. So vielen lieben Dank an alle, and very honored to be here again. <laughs> now the next slide. Okay. The title of my lecture, as you have, might have seen uh, before, is Joost Hochli Book Design, What It Means and Tells from a Korean Perspective. And here on the slide, you see how today's lecture will unfold. So the first will be prologue, five comments from South Korea, and second, some background stories about South Korea, and third, there, there would be the main part, Yosokli book design, nature, craft, people, and books, and the last one would be the epilogue about book, about book making and locality. First, first of all, I'd like to read you some comments by five Korean graphic designers regarding Yosokli book design. You see here a picture of a graphic designer. She's called Shin and I, and she's based in uh, Seoul. She said, uh, I asked some graphic designers around and what they think about your Seoul book design, and these are some quotes they made. The first one is as follows. In Seoul-centered Korea, I don't think I have had a chance to think about the, lo the work of local publishers. So it was very refreshing to see how the exhibition highlighted the, lo the locality of St. Gallen, and I felt envious when I saw that the books dealt seriously with the natural environment of the region. It came as a, as a precious culture. Another uh, graphic designer, he lives in Seoul and he actually uh, used to attend Basel Design School for several years. He said, I am a fan of Tipotron and Edition Auschwitz series. I especially like his series he conceived and curated by himself. He documents the city of St. Gallen by recording local artists, local culture, and the local community of the city with the support of a local printer. The third one, he said a lot actually, and he said, Choi jin -gyu, he's another book designer who lives in Okcheon, about, fa um, about an hour away from, so from Seoul and the, the city is as big as St. Gallen. Living locally and occasionally being asked to do design work locally makes me think about local. What does it mean to do something locally? And how far and in what way can local design be expanded? As I think about these things, I keep, I keep looking at Hockley's books based on locality anew since the themes of his books are neither global nor universal. Despite all that, why do I keep wanting to look at his books? Why do I want to learn from them? And why do his works look newer and even more, more modern over time? I think Hockley's work can be seen as a very important precedent when it comes to planning a, a book with local content that has no chance of being widely distributed. And the fourth one is by Park So Young. She's an in-house book designer of Korea's renowned art publishing house, which is called Yorada. In a society, um, Korea, where only one voice is heard and opinions are polarized, Hochlich's design attitude seems to teach flexibility and harmony. Rather than being driven by big corporations, Yost Hochli, who studies and works locally, finds and writes about the stories of where he lives and designs, edits, and publishes independently is an inspiration for me. Also, the way he founded and ran Fauge S is, an ex is also exemplary. Since I want to see less concentration in the, in the Seoul capital area and more culture richness in each region, because that will solve many of Korea's problems as well, Hochli's activities are precedent. The last one, uh, he's also a graphic designer based in Seoul, Yun Chung-gun, he says, in case of Tipotron and Edition Auschwitz, I think the whole act of planning and publishing comes to me more inspiring than the book design itself, because it is a publication that takes the region, its people, nature, and culture as a subject. <coughs> Considering that Tipotron and Edition Auschwitz were created through, a uh, through the collaboration of designers, photographers, printers, and others, there seems to be a public awareness of the relationship between publishing and locality and the value of it. Could it be said that it feels more like publishing as a play in that it does not aim for high profits or fulfill a specific purpose? In Korea, it is sad to see that many books are made with the support of funds and are 
distributed only to a limited circle of art people. Well, uh, these comments you have just seen were quoted from answers for a questionnaire. In fact, I conducted a questionnaire with five graphic designers in Korea regarding your Seokli book design event that took place in, to, in June 2021 in Seoul. Before I elaborate on five comments, let me introduce to you about the event shortly. In late June 2021, I was invited to, cu to curate a program about your Seokli book designs for the international exchange program in Seoul at Platform P. And Platform P is an incubating institution for publishing related activities. But sadly enough, it's going to close down soon because of political issues. Mm. The head of the, of the institution, Kim Hyun-ho, asked me at the beginning of 2021 to curate a book related project. And without much hesitation, I said that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to do something related to your Sohli's book design. Just around the time, I was already envisioning a show that would allow me to showcase Hockley's book design in my tiny studio space in Daegu. But then I got this offer, so I was lucky enough to grab the chance to introduce Yoos Hockley in a much greater scale and with more budget. I emailed Yoos Hockley immediately whether he was willing to conduct the online lectures and... Oops, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, on online lectures, and fortunately, he said yes. I was really grateful and happy by then. The, the centerpiece of the event was uh, three-day online lectures, which took place from June 30 till July 2nd. On three days in a row in the evening for an hour, Yo Sohli talked about three topics. On the first day, on his inspiration and influences, as well as his thoughts on book design in general. On the second day, he talked about Tipotron series, and on the last day, on Edition Auschwitz series. For each online lecture, around 300 people logged in. It was really a huge uh, crowd, uh, which was um, an amazing number I and the organization didn't expect at all. As a side event, I organized a book show as well. With huge support by Platform P, I was able to purchase all series of Tipotron and Edition Auschwitz series and show them at the exhibition. And, and with the help of this exhibition, I could also see the, all the series for the first time. Other books designed by Yo Sohli were also on show. Total 67 books were exhibited, and they were categorized into six sections. So each section was as follows. The first section was Tipotron series. The second section was Edition Auschwitz. The, the, the third section was design books written by Yo Sohli. And the fourth was art books and art catalogs. The fifth was about San Gallen literature. And the sixth was, was uh, San Gallen local culture. I discussed with Yo Sohli about the sections as well. It was the first time showcasing Yo Sohli's book design in Korea. Although uh, I wrote a chapter on him in my world's 10 book designers, which was published in 2016, and the Korean edition of Yo Sohli's microtypography was released in 2015, only a limited number of designers still was familiar with Yo Sohli before the event. The three-day online lectures and the book show, which was even extended for another couple of days due to uh, full reservations, soon became the hot topic in Korean design community. It must have left a deep impression to many people since quite a number of people sent me direct messages on Instagram and told me how much they loved the lecture series and the show. I also heard that many people visited the Falges website to get, and to get copies of books designed by Yo Sohli. And I, I heard that they made a lot of, lot of sales. <laughs> I don't know which of Yo Sohli's designs captured the hearts of Korean designers, because the reasons could be so varied. Either they were drawn to the sheer beauty of the book's form, others to its content, and some others to his personality as a humble man. And then two years later, I received an email from Rupert Kalkofen in St. Gallen inviting me to this talk. I was very surprised and happy and honored at the same time. I had no reason not to accept. Through an email exchange with Rupert, we came up with, a to with, with today's topic, Yo Sohli's book design, what it means and tells from a Korean perspective. 
In preparing for this topic, I thought it was necessary to ask a few designers around me how they viewed your Socles book design. So I sent them a short questionnaire and got answers. So the, the comments I showed you a, mon a moment ago, and, uh, ago were part of the responses. Some of you may have noticed that those quotes have something in common. Although they are quotes, one thing that was pointed out similarly was the local issue. I don't know whether you have recognized that as well. This is very interesting observation, not least because I wasn't too far off from this view. I actually, I, I also thought that writing on your Sokli like years before that the locality is a very uh, important issue in terms of Korea. And I was not really sure whether other graphic designers would think about that in that way as well, but I was really surprised to get the answers from them and they all mentioned about the local uh, issue. Then the question is, why this common view exists? To unravel this, I'll start with an explanation of the Korean perspective. For that, I'll need to explain to you briefly about the country Korea. Okay. So, uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with these groups here. <laughs> South Korea is uh, a very strongly centralized country. You see the South Korea on the map. Uh, of course, I'm from the south and not from the north. I'm not sure how South Korea is perceived by people here. For the younger generation, it can be the land of K-pop like BTS and Blackpink, but for many, it might still be an unfamiliar East Asian country. And on a side note, I checked to see if there is, was any Korean food in Sangalan and was surprised to find that there was one spot selling bibimbap, which is traditional Korean food. So maybe it's the land of bibimbap for some people here. Um, well then, there is a question that can be asked here. When I say Korean perspective in this talk, I can't speak for the entire Korean community, of course. I think there's an, there's an inevitable limitation in a language that uses the name of a country as a modifier. But I do think that the term Korean perspective definitely implies something different from the perspective of Europe, Japan, or the United States, for example. As John Berger pointed out a long time ago, the way we see, we think, we, we see things can change depending on the environment we are in. And although we are certainly a globalized society, there are still cultural differences. So I'd like to emphasize that the Korean pers perspective I'm about to talk about may be a perspective shared by only by some graphic designers in Korea, but also at the same time, however, this perspective may be quite Korean in, this, in the sense that it may be different from other countries or regions. Now let's go back to the comments. Why did the five designers mention the word local in common? And why do I share this perspective? It comes from the highly centralized structure in Korea. I'm just gonna read out uh, some um, description from the Wikipedia. If you enter the uh, index Seoul capital area, it says, the Seoul capital area or Gyeonggi region is the metropolitan area of Seoul, Incheon, and Gyeonggi province. It's located northwest of South Korea. Its population is 26 million and is ranked as the fourth largest metropolitan area in the world. So it's really unbe unbelievable and not very easy to, uh, to imagine about this size here in St. Gallen. Its area is about uh, more than 20,000 um, yeah, uh, kilometers. It, it, it forms the cultural and commercial, financial, industrial, and residential center of South Korea. The largest city in so is Seoul with a population of approximately 10 million people, followed by Incheon with 3 million inhabitants. And here, another, demo, uh, another des description about demographic covering only about 12% of the country's area. This is a problem I made it. Or just 20% of the, of the area, 12%. Uh, but the Seoul capital area is home to more than 48.2% of the national population. And is the world, world's ninth largest urban area. This percentage has risen steadily since the mid 20th century and the trend is expected to continue. Currently more than half of the people who move from one region to another are moving to the capital area. In 2020, it was reported that the Seoul capital area's population has exceeded 50% 50 50 of the country's total population. So only 12% of the whole country area, but the 50% population is living in this, this small area. So, 
So this is unprecedented in the world, and it's very Korean phenomenon as well. So why is this happening? Well, just a short, very short <laughs> history of Korea. It has to do with the state-led industrialization that took place in South Korea in a short period. It's a very long story, but I'll give you a very short version. South Korea was a Japanese colony for the first 30 years of the 20th century. After being liberated in 1945, the country went through the Korean War in 1950. Just when we thought we were celebrating liberation after 30 years of Japanese rule, we immediately fell victim of, of the Cold War ideology. The three-year war left South Korea extremely poor and devastated. In the early 1960s, a dictator named Park Jong-hee, which he, whom you can see here on the screen, emerged with the belief that the country needed a boost. He staged a military coup, took control of the country, and quickly began to remake it according to his beliefs, which included a strong industrialization drive with centralized heavy industry. South Korea then went through another dictatorship until the 80s, and a very rapid industrialization process allowed the country to develop industri industrially by leaps and bounds. At the same time, jobs were concentrated in Seoul, forcing the local population to commute to the capital. Population growth was inevitable. You see, he's a very famous Korean photographer who took the industrializing uh, Korea in the 70s and 80s. In the absence of a sophisticated and well thought out urban policy, the natural environment was destroyed and replaced by massive housing complexes and, and apart apartments. Not to mention along the way, the craft culture of Korea's common people was often discarded and outdated and unmodern. Seoul is almost 20 times bigger than Zurich in its population, and Seoul is overrepresented more than any other city in Korea. People perceive Korea as Seoul, and in fact, 100% of the Korean culture you know is based in Seoul. The same goes for the graphic design scene. Even in Switzerland, a country smaller than Korea, the graphic de design scene is centered around Zurich, Basel, Lausanne, Luzern, and St. Gallen, to name a few. But unfortunately, South Korea's graphic design scene is 100% Seoul. There is a heavy reliance on the metropolitan area and thus a lack of diversity. This is a screenshot from the web scene. It's nice that it's a British uh, web scene uh, on, graphic design uh, on, on graphic design. And an, a number of Korean uh, graphic designers were introduced on this web scene. But they were uh, either based in Seoul or rather abroad. None of them were non -soul, uh, none of them were non -soul areas. And there's another issue as well. Apart from these objective circumstances, I would like to share my personal ex experience also very shortly. I moved from Seoul, I was actually born in Seoul. I, mo I moved from Seoul to Daegu 10 years ago because my partner Jaewan, a book designer, was transferred to a school in Daegu. Neither Jaewan and I had any ties to this city, but there was no reason for, for us not to go there. I decided uh, to move to Daegu without any preconceived notions about the city, but at the same time, I began to see uh, unexpected reactions. So people around me uh, kept asking me, why are you going there? Why are you really leaving Seoul? How come uh, are you really, um, how, how you dare leave, living there? You know, those kind of really strange uh, reactions and questions came to me. These reactions were really strange to me, so, and what's even funnier is uh, that Daegu is not, and Seoul are only one hour and 50 minutes apart by bullet train. So it's not very long distance. However, I later learned that there is a pre pre uh, perception among Koreans that living outside of Seoul is a step away from su successful life. Mo moving out of Seoul was seen like something conservative or poor or unstable or out of touch with global trends. It was only in Daegu that I first realized that this kind of stereotype of non seoul areas existed. So before moving, to, moving down to Daegu, I didn't even know about these stereotypes at all. Well, Daegu used to be a fairly liberal city politically until the early 1970s, but it became a right-wing city because of the presidential elections and the industrialization of the area. So for many Koreans, Daegu is a bastion of conser conservative politics, and that's partly why it's perceived as a backward city. <laughs> so people call it like Godam Daegu as well. 
But when you peel the back, uh, peel back the layers, Daegu is a city of consumer culture where the camera and coffee culture was first introduced in Korea. And like St. Gallen, it had a glo glorious heritage as a textile city as well. Besides, it is the third largest urban city in South Korea after Seoul and Busan. It is the fourth largest official metropolitan area in the nation with over 2.3 million residents. So it's much, much bigger than St. Gallen. But because of so much of the in infrastructure and capital are concentrated in Seoul, Daegu doesn't have the status of a metropolis at all. It's one of the regions outside of Seoul that lacks the infrastructure so that many young people are forced to leave. So maybe now you can understand why they actually mention these kind of words. I know it's impossible to explain decades of history in just a few minutes, but I hope this gives you some background of, on why local was an issue for many Korean graphic designers. Of course, the story I have told you is still fragmentary. There are a lot of differences between regions, so the, the perspective cannot be generalized either. Still, there is no denying, denying that life in Korea is dominated by the Seoul capital area. I'm not happy about the fact that much of the cultural capital is in Seoul. And even if I wanted to bring good events to Daegu, the city's close and bureaucratic mindset would be an obstacle as well. As big a, uh, as big a problem as Seoul's bias against the region is, it's also a big problem for the region itself to be isolated within the, within the confines of regionalism. Uh, going back to the previous five graphic designers, I'd like to point out that the reason every single one of them mentioned local was because of the strong Seoul centrism in South Korea, and no one can really deny, deny this phenomenon. Then what exactly is local about your Seoul's book design? So what did they uh, find about, look, about what kind of local um, um, material um, feature did they find about in, in, in your Socrates book design. What can we infer from this issue? So now I'll move on to your Socrates book design in terms of uh, locality issues. Um, your Socrates was uh, not only a book designer, but he was also a very pro prolific planner and publisher as well. While his book designs are often discussed in Western design discourse in relation to typo typography, his work as an editor and publisher seems to be less discussed. Much of my talk will focus on his content planning as well, but I don't think planning or editing is, is a separate uh, concept from design. In fact, good planning is the source of good design, good book, good book design, and in, in that sense, Hockley's bri brilliant book design owes a lot to his own planning as well. For this lecture, I have looked at the books that Hockley planned and designed on the four themes. So nature, crafts, people, and finally books. Uh, please note that the books are from my own collection. So I selected several books from my collection under, under, under these four topics. First, um, let's talk about the nature, which is a topic uh, that goes hand in hand with locality. Although we live in a time of climate crisis, nature is a tre treasure trove of the unique characteristics and cultures of each region. It's fall in South Korea, but the trees I see there are different species than the ones I see here. Even the colors are different. It's a global society, but there's nothing like nature to remind me that the ground I'm standing on, the ground I'm living on, is still very different and diverse at the same time. I just want to uh, tell you an anecdote. My daughter, who is traveling with me, says uh, she's, uh, she's for the first time here in Switzerland, uh, but, but the third time in Europe. It's, uh, it's hard for her to have bread every day. <laughs> so she's always looking for rice. And she asked me, why do you only eat bread here? So I said, because the climate is different, the soil is different, and the crops are different. <laughs> so, and in terms of locality, your, of uh, your soul is book design, nature stands as one of the keys. So this is one of my favorite books, uh, which is called Baumgeschichten aus der Ostschweiz, published by VGS in 2002. It features 40 species of trees native to Eastern Switzerland, with text by Peter Müller and photographs by Chris Mansfield. The photographs, the scientific details, and the text explaining them all come together on one page uh, uh, on one spread bring, to bring the trees to life. The, le the, the re uh, relatively long format of the book, which is a signature design of Hockley's, is also evident here. The combination of deep green, 
and red colors on the cover is very elegant. Although I speak a little German, I couldn't read the entire book, but I got a sense of Hockley's approach to the Eastern Swiss tree ecosystem. After an introductory paragraph about the importance of trees, the story of the trees of Eastern Switzerland is told in full page spreads with a photo on the, on the tree on the right side, on each spread, a single paragraph about each tree on the left side, and a more scientific story in the margin, in, in the narrow column. So maybe I can try out. It's, it's not working <laughs> anyway. So, it's, uh, so every, every single spread is, uh, runs like this, runs like in this way. And, oops. Okay, and the bottom, there is a diagram or detail that shows more specific features of the tree. I was struck uh, by the very five, uh, fine organization of the spread. A single spread describes a single tree and each spread is composed of different genres of visuals. A personal, a scientific story, a photograph, and a scientific illustration or a descriptive photograph. So each spread is a self-contained tree story adding a three-dimensional perspective to the sporadic tree stories that exist in eastern Switzerland. The task of organizing information is harmoniously solved through editing and design. I don't think this layout would, would have been possible without much thought about how to present each tree. This is a book that reveals how Hockley's warm perspective on nature. Now the second uh, book which uh, you might be familiar with Moving on to the uh, Edition Auschwitz series, we can't help but mention Sitter Kiesel. First of all, I have to mention Wurz Hockley's delicate illustration, the subtle colors of the pebbles printed on the translucent paper uh, for the jacket, uh, which catch the reader's eye. Turning the book cover, the reader is greeted by a three column grid, and on each page, the grid works flexibly. Pebbles flow across the entire page, and clear infographics appear, stim stimulating the balance between emotion and reason. So these are the spreads from um, uh, the spreads which uh, shows the illustrations only, and then there are also spreads with infographics as well. And I, and I put them together like here. One of the things I love about the book are nine infographics. I've, I've counted and I thought that there, there were nine infographics uh, total, each of which is designed from the color of a pebble found in nature of St. Gallen. You can see how the infographics and the pebbles illustrations flow so fluidly into each other. The fact that Hockley extracted the colors for the infographics from the pebbles and nothing else allowed me to read the, his basic reverence and respect for the content, in this case, nature. Hockley described the, this book in a lecture in Korea as follows, and I'll read that in German. So entstand eine Publikation, die einerseits mit den Zeichnungen der Kiesel ästhetisches Vergnügen bereitet, andererseits aber auch Auskunft gibt über die Geochronologie und die Entstehung der verschiedenen Gesteine, aus denen im, im Laufe von Jahrmillionen Kiesel wurden und wie diese durch Gletscher und Flüsse dorthin transportiert wurden, wo sie mein Bruder fand. So wurde es zu einem reich bebilderten Heimatkundebändchen über die Erdgeschichte der Umgebung von St. Gallen. Ein Bilderbüchlein auch, das allen großen Spaß macht. Die beliebte Publikation erreichte in kurzer Zeit drei Auflagen. So this is what I hopefully told um, at the, uh, two years ago in Seoul's lecture. <coughs> the second book is the Herbstlaub. The following, um, it is in keeping with, the, with this season right now, the cover is untitled and shows two kinds of fallen leaves stacked on top of each other, one on translucent jacket and the other on the front cover, which you can see when you re remove the jacket. It reminds me of the piles of leaves when you, when you walk in the mountains in the fall season. According to the publisher in Hochli, the book is similar to the Sittekis uh, concept. The difference is in the captions in the book, a spe species Species-specific fall leaf is featured on each page. While the previous Sitter Kissel was accompanied by scientific description, this book is accompanied by poetry. So here, uh, all these uh, texts which you can see on the spreads are all poet poetries. It's a very literary choice that gives you a sense of the fall season. 
and on the right side you see like the black rectangle. On the right hand side, the name and uh, the name and scientific name of each plant is repeated on a black rectangle, so it feels like a little dictionary as well. After a rather emotional and, and literary flow, the pages suddenly take a turn, setting, starting on page 42, and, and after that, an, an index page appears, and throughout six spreads, each of the previously introduced leaves is accompanied by a scientific explanation. Uh, what impressed me even more was the fact that Hockley and his wife, Ursula Hockley, actually pick, picked up and collected all of these leaves. He said in a lecture in Korea, now again in German, Im Herbst zwei, zwei aufeinanderfolgenden Jahre haben meine Frau und ich Blätter gesucht und sie anschließend gepresst. In dieser Zeit habe ich mir Gedanken gemacht über die Gestaltung der Publikation. In einem kleinen Büchlein, das mich fast überall hin begleitet, habe ich mir einiges skizziert und es, es wundert mich heute, dass sich manche Ideen von der Skizze bis zur Ausführung erhalten haben. If I have understood correctly, these leaves are the actual leaves Hochlis collected and they are indeed the sounds of St. Gallen. In the, in, the, in, the, in the introduction to the book, he also notes that these are not perfectly beautiful leaves, but have been altered by nature and living things in various ways, like the weathering of nature. Given that we are always influenced by our surroundings, this is, this is an important perspective for noticing local nature and ecosystem. Now let's move over to the second topic, which, is, which covers the, uh, the topic crafts. As next, the theme uh, craft stands out, stands out for me. Craft is an area that shows the specific, specificity of a region. Korea lost a lot of uh, a lot of its uh, a lot a lot of of its craft culture due to rapid industrialization. In recent years, however, there has been a movement among the younger generation to revisit Korean crafts and to keep them alive in a modern way. In this context, the books on crafts that Hockley has planned and designed present a world of tactile sensitivity that can easily be negle neglected in contemporary design. These books beautifully illustrated craftspeople who have created a world of their own of their own, independent of the industrialization and mass production of the global world. Now the first one is the Bird Cages, which is really very, very beautiful and published in 1985, uh, which was the third volume of the Tipotron. Um, it features uh, Bird Cages by Keller, an antique dealer and collector. Keller has been collecting Bird Cages for years and they come from all walks of life. Uh, some were made by craftsmen, others by amateurs, according to the foreword written by Hockley himself. This is a world away from the asymmetrical modern world we used to see in the what's so called modern graphic design. One of the things that makes this project so beautiful is that it broadens the scope of design. Much of the design we see in our daily lives is spontaneously created not only by professionals, but also by many ordinary people. In the book, the cages are categorized by form, and the hierarchy of professionals and non-professionals is, is, is not at issue here. Hockley mixes symmetry and asymmetry as if he's blurring the boundary between professionals and non-professionals. He also designed the page number based on the cages. I'm particularly interested in the bold rectangular shapes um, you see here um, the various, oops, sorry. Um, there are like rectangular uh, shapes over here and they always change on each spread. So they, they make, they create, uh, create a kind of rhythm which appear at different places on, on each spread and this somewhat creates a kind of rhythm. They also remind me of the thick aluminum or steel plate that are prominent in bird cages. Throughout the book, Hockley's design are inspired by craft materials. And now, the, now the, the next book is The Joy in Creative Work. Um, it is about, uh, about a company that managed to become the most famous embroidery in St. Gala. Maybe you all, may, many of you are familiar with this. Published as the 10th book in the Tipotron series, it shows the textile industry in St. Gala at, it, at its height. And if you uh, put out the, um, the jacket, it looks like this. 
And in fact, the book reads as a kind of short and small history of a company. Overall, the book shows the process of textile production from the earliest uh, stages, or, or stages of textile production to the catwalk. It's fascinating to see how fibers that were once just closed were gradually transformed into clothing. While the black and white descriptive, um, descriptive photos are informative, the color printed fabric details provide a musical rhythm. The placement of the fabrics and garments re reads like a melody. Once again, uh, I'm impressed by the grid system, which corresponds to the uh, theme of the book. In the book, Hockley says that he based his grid on the working paper grid used by embroidery designers. So this is his explanation in the book. And also you can see the trace of this grid system here on the cover uh, inside, the, inside the book as well. Um, the next book begins with Hockley's personal connections. It's called Colored Bees and Silver Stars, a nice book for the end of the year. At the Kunstgewerbe Schule in St. Gallen, Hockley met the artist David Buchler, who had been collecting Christmas trees, tree ornaments for decades in antiques, junk shops, and elsewhere. Hockley's interest in the purely formal in this collection led him to virtually reimagine re the collection. In the stunning photographs by photographer Michael Rast, the ornaments he selected take on a life of their own. Each ornament, photograph against a different backdrop, is a jewel in its own right. Some are placed against a variety of backgrounds in their own unique interpretation, creating a warm feeling throughout. Hockley wrote the book all by himself, and he's created a new design history of four ornaments, because no one else will ever be able to look at them in such a serene way. Of course, this object may not be from St. Gallen. I don't know where each of them are from. But what's important is the way a story of a local collector is told. Telling and highlighting the stories of people working in a region is important because it's not a universal design story. The everyday life of, of ordinary people is another de design story that uh, the Warsaw called universalism in design can never touch. In that sense, Hockley is re, uh, rewriting history from local and ordinary people's perspective. Now, this is the third topic, uh, which will be all about people. Another theme that emerges in relation to locality is people. History has always glorified the few who are named. And in the last few years, there has been a new wave of history writing that is resisting this. Similarly, Jos Hockley book this uh, Hockley's book series have brought to the surface local characters who would never be part of, of the history without their names in print. In order of, of the publication, let me add, add my thoughts uh, about them. A um, lot of Korean people actually like this book, actually, <laughs> and it's also one of my fav favorite. This is the 13th book of the Tipo Trion series titled Joshi Schildknecht, Street Trader. It has the name, same feeling as a children's picture book. Uh, note how the lemons, grapes, and pears are printed on recycled paper. I just cannot uh, take my eyes off, off from, this from this beautiful cover. It's a very attractive cover. I learned at the talk in Seoul that Hockley actually paid a lot of attention to the coloring and printing of these fruits. I think that care rubbed off on me as a reader. The book is about George Schildknecht, a market vendor who is local cele celebrity in St. Gallen. I don't know whether he's still, still uh, alive here or still working in St. Gallen. I have no idea. <laughs> it follows his day-to-day -day life. It's um, uh, quite unusual to learn about a local vendor, but I, uh, I was also impressed by the way it visualized the market and shows the fruits he sells. The reason I'm interested in this book is that markets and like this are one of the one of the old manifestations of localism. And we have many of them in our in Korea as well. Independent of large corporate chains, many vendors occupy a small space and, uh, and sell a, wa a wide variety of foods and goods. And you can imagine these markets have a very different feel than franchise supermarkets. You deal directly with the vendors. The act of shopping involves human interaction, and you can get much fresher ingredients as well. I love these markets, but they are disappearing in Korea. So more and more people are shopping online. There's less and less interaction between local vendors and residents. So I thought this book 
which is very re reminiscent of traditional Korean market and where the vendor is the main character was quite inspiring. The contrast between the black and white photos and the colorful fruit photos also makes the book very beautiful. If we weren't for the beautifully photographed fruits, the book would be even less visually appealing. I just love these uh, this, uh, photographs and the spreads really. Very stunning, actually. <laughs> yeah. In, in addition uh, to this book, I was also impressed by Carl Uliger's book, but however, due to lack of time, I won't, I, I will just skip the book here. And then I'll move over to the Andalusian in Apetzel uh, Festival in Summer Hill. This is the 17th book in Tipotron series. Uh, as the first title of this book, um, uh, I was very, uh, it was very strange for me because Andalusian and Apetzel, it was a very strange combination for me. As a book uh, about the cultural exchange uh, between the people of Andalusia and, uh, and Apenzel, it was uh, very impressive that it was not an exchange between big cities, but, it, but an exchange about between local people. Although this book contains fleeting events and exchange, exchange it also reminds me of the problematic state of foreign mi migrants in Korea. Korea has a serious, serious problem with foreign labor, uh, just like many other countries. The question of how to welcome foreigners is becoming a social issue as well. In fact, it's about how a society welcomes others, especially when it comes to foreign culture. So the book speaks to this sense of hospitality from the very beginning. When you open the off-white cover, you are greeted by bright primary colors. The combination of green, red, green, and yellow is so beautiful. Intuitively, you know that these are the colors of Spain, and it's very symbolic. The spread has eight columns. On the pages are black and white photos of the event with colorful captions. The text and images are woven together until the, until the middle of the book. And then you see spreads with uh, photos and captions just like an album. The organization of the book is, uh, the, the structure of the book is very organic, just as the contents page. The contents page is quite contemporary and modern in a way, giving a different sense of feeling from the main content. This is, this is a kind of uh, the main feature of uh, your soul is book design, this imbalance, and which I really like uh, a lot about his book design. And now, um, uh, a title which I cannot uh, pronounce very well. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is the 11th book uh, published by Edition Auschwitz. And one of the things that really impressed me about this book was the focus on regional language. When I curated the book uh, show in Seoul, the, I, I could not uh, translate this, this title. It was really impossible to translate fully into Korean. And it's an overwhelmingly written book, uh, but on the right-hand side, on each page, the original dialects are explained on re in red. So even though the book looks like it's, it's, high, it's, it's like in high German, it's actually based on the original dialect. When I first saw this book, I was really shocked and also very much inspired because it was the, my first uh, time to see this kind of German book, which explains the uh, dialect in, in, in this uh, kind of visual way. The book is a memoir by Roland Inawan, a writer, ethnographer, regional museum director, and administrator of the Appenzell region. In the book, he talks about his rural childhood in the 1950s and 60s as a book about the childhood of St. Gallen-based regional scholar and, ad, and administrator of the Appenzell region. The book's message is conveyed through the use of dialogue, which I don't understand at all. <laughs> It is said that many regional uh, languages are disappearing around the world as more same countries move into a single time zone and the unique language of, of a region is lost. A person's identity is often defined by the way she or he speaks. And the fact that the book uses the dialogue shows a pride in the local culture. In particular, the simple combination of red and ink of a red and black gives the book a distinct identity. The gray photographs in the text reinforce the re retrospective nature of the story, but the typography or the cover is very modern and bold, holding the book very contemporary where it could otherwise flow very li 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 lyrically. Now, the last topic would be the book.
itself. Finally, books. Um, I'm here because of the books, I guess. How do books in a, in a place uh, or a region relate to each other? There's a long tradition of, re of a region's history being recorded in books. In fact, it's no exaggeration to say that books are treasure trove of a place. They contain a local past that is often un unavailable in the modern world, and they are great reference for reading the present. But it's not just about the documentation. Books are also a product of the culture and spirit of a region. Books cannot be produced without culture and spiritu spirit spirit uh, spiritual activity. They are a collection of, a, of invisible ideas and values, and the fact that they were produced in a particular region is a testament to the high level of spiritual activity in that region. Just like in St. Gallen, where I am now, I believe that Jos Hochli's activities as a book designer and a publisher were possible in the friendly tradition of St. Gallen Abbey Library and other small publishers and libraries and designers. They were constantly producing books. There's no other medium that brings a place to life like making a book because a place that's not documented in a book eventually ceases to exist. It's also the reason why local publishing and bookmaking needs to, needs to, needs, uh, to be, uh, keep going on. Uh, this is one of the, uh, as I said at the Vanissage last Friday, it's one of the best book I, was, uh, I, uh, I admired and also influenced by. Uh, I, I can uh, not uh, miss this book, which is called Book Design in Switzerland. Uh, as it was the first book that introduced me to the world of Jos Hochli's book design over a decade ago. It was uh, the, the eccentric cover design that drew me. When I first saw the cover of the book, I was really uh, um, um, kind of um, um, not really sure whether this is really Swiss design because it was very um, apart from the usual Swiss typography, especially the serif, the serif typography and, and also the iconography you, you can see on the cover. So it was very bizarre for me, <laughs> kind of bizarre experience to see the cover. And this is a book I have eagerly read and learned from. You can see here, uh, very many uh, highlights and notes here. And I spent my childhood in Switzerland, as I said before, so I was aware of the fact that the country has many different uh, looks depending on its neighbors. However, I was shocked and inspired by the fact that Swiss design can be expressed in so many different ways depending on the language. It was also a pleasure because it opened my eyes to, do, to new perspectives. Let's read the next paragraph because it's an important one. This is a paragraph uh, Jos Hochli wrote himself. Uh, we must also consider the influence exercised on Swiss typography by the Bauhaus and the work done in Zurich before and during the Second World War by Max Biel and Richard Paul Lose. It resulted after the war and in the 1950s in the sort of typography known wrongly as has already been pointed out as Swiss typography. This is not, if we understand it as a style of typography applied throughout the country by all or most, at any rate, typo typographers for, for all or most of their work. It is since this form of typographical design was developed in Switzerland, in Zurich and Basel, its most important characteristic is great typography. This means a layout where text in, and illustrations are assembled on a consi consistently maintained page grid. For the first time, I realized that the Swiss typography I knew was part of Swiss typography and that a country's style could not be reduced to a single one. It was a whole new way of reading history and a small wake up call to a worldview that I felt was universal. After, the, after this paragraph I mentioned, Hockley goes on to describe Swiss book design by each language region, German, French, and Italian. And this was the first time I realized that the history of book design could be written on a regional basis, which was really a big influence and big inspiration for me. Now the second book I would like to mention is Buchgestaltung in St. Gallen. This is not written by Hochley, but uh, uh, it's written by Roland Thieu. Uh, it's also, an, uh, in my view, it's an extension of the previous one. Ro Roland Thieu presents a different genealogy of Swiss book design, uncovering a context of Swiss, Swiss design that has been overshadowed by the larger typographic canon, and then goes further to, to write a new history of book design specific to St. Gallen. In this book, Fru explains 
the historical background of St. Gallen as a book town and then summons the publishers, printers, and designers who work there. If the previous previous book was more of a shocker, this one is a guide to the problem of how to write about obscure locally based graphic design. With this book, Fuel refutes the idea of Swiss graphic design or typography as a universal history. The book is declarative. It, it explains in a very confident tone that book design that book design exists in St. Gallen too, which I didn't know before at all. In particular, in the section describing St. Gallen as a city of books, Fuel explains that the city has never had an absolute school. I found that very impressive. Usually we try to form a school of thought so that we have a presence, but in St. Gallen, and especially in the book design that surrounds it, there is no traditional dogmatism. And, I, and uh, for students, this position can seem very unstable. Uh, there is no precedence, no, and so it's, it's, so it's insecure, and at the same time, it's not competitive from, from an outside, outsider's view. And so it's, it can be less visible, and that's what I like to understand as the climate around the books in, of, the, of St. Gallen. These are the spreads from the books here. And another book I would like to mention is the, the Rue Libre, uh, to Papier Gebracht. St. Gallen's status as a city of books leads to, an, to a new look at several figures involved. The sixth volume in the Edition Auschwitz series honors Louis Ribot, who spent his entire life in St. Gallen as a publisher, bookseller, and more. Uh, I, I'm sure that you know much better, better about him <laughs> than I do. And this beautiful book is a re re uh, retrospective of his life and his experiences with books. I haven't had the chance to read uh, it yet, uh, but it sounds like a, uh, it's a bit of a heartwarming story about how a man's life in a city is shaped by books. It's also a local story about books, and you don't often get to hear a story like that. The history of books in a city told through one person. In this book, Hochley de devotes a total, six of, uh, a total of six columns on the spread, with the main text in the center of uh, four columns and, and relevant commentary at the first and third column of, of each page. Also, he does not forget to make use of the margin at the bottom. It's a great read. Uh, the rich illustration and explanatory text make for a very pleasing reading exper experience. Now the last book I would like to mention is, uh, is uh, Max Koller Typograph. Now the last book, this is a book uh, Hochley has written on the typographer Max Koller. It brings together in one place the work of Max Koller who died in unexpectedly untimely from the cover which looks like an epitaph. Hochley has done an exquisite job of editing to showcase his works. Asymmetrical yet symmetrical rhythm runs through the book. It's fluid and unhurried. The spreads are organized thematically explaining the, exp explaining the typographer's various works. At the same time, it's a memorial to a former colleague of Hochlist, and so the book unfolds not only their personal relationship, but also the microhistory of the St. Gallen-based typographers. Now the epilogue. Um, so far, I have uh, talked about, I'm sorry, oops. Uh, talked about Jost Hochli, book design, what it means and tells from a Korean perspective. And there's one quote that struck me the most when I first learned about Hochli. Robin Kinlo said, Basel and Zurich are on the world map of typography, but St. Gallen is not. No, without Hostetler and Hochli, St. Gallen would not be on the world map of typography. And indeed, Hochli not only designed books, he has visualized St. Gallen culture and its regions through the books he designed. And this power differentiates him from other contemporaries. We have seen an array of beautiful examples uh, how designing books is not just about giving contents a form, but about excavating items that are not told, about narrating and, or visualizing them in the most persuasive manner that fits the contents. And I think it's this attractiveness that many Korean designers felt inclined to. The contents, the contents stands out so clearly and beautifully in each book 
he has designed. It's a beautiful and compelling example of spe speaking differently, or let's say another way of designing. We hear therefore the voices of St. Gallen in the books Hochli has designed. So far, I have looked at Jost Hochli's book design from the perspective of, of locality, and to do so, I have identified the key words that describe locality, nature, crafts, people, and books. And I have reinterpreted Hochli's book design around them. I, I'm not sure how convincing this perspective will be to you, here to the audience, but considering that it is one of the, one of the some Korean perspectives, I think it can be a, uh, a meaningful ref re uh, reflection, and I'm happy to share this somewhat unfamiliar view, view with you here. And under the influence of Yost Hokli, I've been keeping attention on how the local stories of, of Korea can be told or visualized, and I keep thinking what kind of stories there are that need to be told, and of course, we had our own tradition of telling stories and publishing them as well. And here are a few examples. And this is actually um, um, uh, published in the, in the 80s. And in, um, the publisher of the publishing company, which is called Burigi Punamu, he was the, uh, a very elite in the, the 70s and 80s. And he was highly influenced by American modernism. And also, he actually adopted the, uh, the first time the grid system into Korea magazine. And later he published this kind of a series which uh, each of these uh, volume documents each uh, uh, canton, each region in Korea, which uh, uh, we, uh, there are like 11 um, um, regions in Korea. So even if they are published like uh, 30, 40 years ago, they are highly visually well organized, well documented, and very nice high quality photographs are uh, inserted as well. And there's not a uh, decent research yet on this uh, series either. So maybe another time I can take a look at these books and then uh, research them in, in, from the point of a designer's view. And there's another ongoing magazine which also um, deals with local, local issues. So each um, magazine, each issue deals with uh, either with, with one town or city. And I just brought some, uh, some um, some spreads from the uh, from fall fall issue, and yeah, lots of photographs and lots of interviews and with local artists, local craftsmen, people, and local food and so on. And here you see some pictures from the uh, Busan, which is also uh, another big city in the southern part of Seoul and the second largest city in Korea. So this is also has something to do with local issue. And here, um, I've also mentioned about this uh, on my Tipo Sangalan uh, lecture last uh, Friday, I guess, uh, or Saturday, I guess. And th this uh, uh, book is uh, heavily influenced by actually by Yo uh, publishing activities, and it's called Rhythm Series, and uh, um, it actually deals with uh, regional, regional and local issues in Korea. So I launched this series, which is called Rhythm Series, and published its first book. And it's a photo book made up of photos and stories by photographer Om Do Yeon, and tells about the hidden story of the city uh, of Daegu, where I live in now. So some spreads from the book. This is only in Korea and in France because the photographer Om Do Yeon, she is from Korea but lives in Fran France for 10 years. So we thought it would be nice to have only in France and in, and in Korea, which is a very rare combination. So like, uh, finally, like today's uh, theme, I would like to mention just, just as um, Swiss typography does not speak for Switzerland, the Korean perspective I'm talking about, I've expressed today, does not represent the perspective of the Korean community. So please, please keep in mind that my opinion is just one perspective. Therefore, I wrap my presentation with further comments from the four graphic designers aforementioned, and maybe there will be another issues uh, regarding your Sokli book design from Korean perspective. So here he is, and maybe what he says can be a, a little bit controversial as well. Uh, I'll read 
a lot. Um, while Yosoki emphasized his, dis his distinction from graphic designers like Josef Miller Brockman, Amy Ruder, and Armin Hoffman, who were active in Basel and Zurich in the 1950s and 60s, for someone like me, so for him, like working in East Asia, in Korea, in the 2020s, his book design is, is not very different from, from the years, so, uh, especially when it comes to using grid system. I am not sure whether the, the asymmetrical layer through the symmetrical placement of the text box, I haven't very well understood this uh, phrase here, uh, through, the grid, uh, through the grid differentiates from the aforementioned designers. His attitude may be different from theirs, but from an outsider's point of view, it still looks very Swiss style. And another point from Park So Young, some keywords that come to me are as follows, harmonious, attitude, and conscientious designer and local based. Even though Jos Hochli is a Swiss designer, he doesn't follow the mainstream design trends and uses symmetrical or asymmetrical expressions and proportions according to the nature of the book. When you look at the book he designed, you can see the precision and sincerity of the designer even in the smallest details. In a world where we are inundated with social media feeds, email subscriptions, and advertisements, Hockley's labor, which is not overt, but carefully refined and invisible, uh, in invisible places, seems to shine even more. There were books published a long time ago, but they don't seem outdated. It's because his design is simple and clear, the proportions are harmonious, and each book was made with so much sincerity. And Che jin -kyu said, I think what Hockley pursued was not necessarily a strict craftsmanship. I don't think he was someone who pursued craftsmanship to the extreme. Of course, I know the story that he strictly controlled printing, pursued advanced technology, and required a difficult finish. But rather than pursuing craftsmanship, I think he pursued something more casual, more ordinary. Would it be more correct to say that he pursued something familiar? Anyway, it's something I want to think about further. He was really amazed by Jos uh, Hockley's uh, online lectures and the book design. <laughs> One of uh, his, his big fan, actually. And, and Yun Chung Bun said, if, it makes me wonder if a publication by an individual with a local theme could last more than a decade in Korea. And maybe one day there will be exhibitions like titles like Voices of Kumpo, Voices of Suwon, and Voices of Changwon. And these all these uh, are names of uh, Korean towns. Also, I'm curious how Yo Sok Lee has been introduced or consumed in design community in Korea. I learned that he was the author of micro, micro Typography and one of the designers in the world's top 10 book designers through the event. Before that, he was unfamiliar to me. I wonder if the experiences of different individuals can converge into a Korean perspective, and if so, what can be said? Converge into a Korean perspective, and if so, what can be said? Okay, uh, so I hereby uh, deliver to you the voices of South Korea, I guess. Hopefully next time someone else from my country will let you hear another voice on your Sokli's book design. And at the same time, I hope that, the, that my topic, somewhat unfamiliar uh, in relation to your Sokli, have interested you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I can understand. <laughs> I'll try. No, no, you can try to. <laughs> Is there any idea on your mind? Any questions? I would also welcome feedbacks on this issue as well, because I was not really sure how this kind of topic will be um, uh, deliver to this uh, to the audience here in Sangalan because uh, for us locality is really big issue in Korea and it's almost like a rising issue more and more and also young generation is really interested in this kind of issue as well but in terms of Europe it's uh, I guess I guess it's not very um, critical I, I think so I think this issue can be uh, a little bit kind of um, this kind of there can be a kind of uh, um, psychological distance. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. I have a question. Uh, 
question. Um, um, Korean language system is uh, quite different than the uh, Western system. Um, what is like the learning you take from? Uh, I mean, it, I'm a bit astonished in that way because we have such a complete different um, time system than you have. Mm -hmm. So, as far as I know, in Korean you also have like letters uh, compared to Chinese language, who has kind of images more. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't have justified setting because every letter has its, it's like monospaced, as far as I understand, isn't it? Yeah, mostly they are monospaced, but there are, I mean, these days there are also like different kinds of um, um, uh, 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 new approaches to, to this uh, typography as well. But do you write from left to right, or do you write also from right to left, or from upside to downside? Uh, usually in modern contemporary Korean, we actually um, uh, start from left to, to right, just as usual here in, in European uh, countries. But um, for, since for uh, 10 um, years or so, from since for a decade, uh, another young generation in Korea, they started to use the vertical typesetting as well. That's the tradition which we have lost, actually, because as I told you before, because of the heavy industrialization, they actually wanted to get rid of the old tradition. They, see, they, they thought that this kind of vertical writing was not modern at all. So we actually, for many years, we actually got rid of this vertical writing system. But these uh, days, we uh, we, are, we have newly adopted this uh, system again, and uh, new generation, they are designing typefaces that also goes well for vertical settings. So, But it's still not very usual. Mostly we write from um, left, to left to right, yeah. Is there any learning you can take from our system? I mean, especially now, in that case, from your to the work of Korean design? No. I, can you repeat the question yeah, again? Yeah. Um, because we have a different system, mm -hmm. what is the learning from Korean designer from design from your story? Learning uh, from... What can Korean designers learn from looking at Yohuri's books? Yohuri's books, uh, you, you mean in terms of uh, typography probably? Uh, I, I think one of the biggest inspiration could be the, the mixture of symmetry and asymmetry, I, I guess. And also the way, um, just, just as I presented here, is um, the new perspective on Swiss typography, actually. Yeah. So it, it, as I said, before, um, before Yosokli was introduced into Korea, uh, we just knew about, we, a lot of people actually knew about Swiss typography, Swiss style, and they said like uh, range left and or Yan Tsiho, you know, all this kind of like uh, uh, dog, dogmatism actually. And they thought that would be the only Swiss style, but, and also they, they thought asymmetrical would be the, the only modern way of uh, learning typography. But you also actually opened the new way of setting types and that we can also use this kind of different uh, typography system as well. So that's, uh, this kind of flexible uh, attitude has uh, gave us a lot of inspiration, I would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, please, what kind of lit literature is most popular in uh, South Korea? and who still younger, middle and older generations still read books? <laughs> That's an important question. <laughs> um, uh, I should tell you a very um, sad and uh, shocking story that uh, libraries in universities, they put out the books from their libraries because there is no space for the, for the books. Yeah, they give out the books like just like trash, and this was really shocking. Yeah, it's really this report. You can find the, those kind of news on, on on the media, on Korean newspapers. And um, recently, I heard on the radio that only one out of two adults uh, read one book per year. Yeah, so Korea is actually very 
uh, how, how you say, a society that does not books read a lot, actually. <laughs> because everywhere you can get logged in very easily, and it's very highly digitized, digitized society as well. So it's very rare to see people reading or uh, having books in hand, actually. And also, my daughter is over there. But <laughs> I would say, I, I told her, I tell her to read books, but uh, she does not like books. She even told me, uh, why don't you like exchange or give books as gifts, just as we used to do? And she said, why books? Nobody give, uh, nobody reads books these days. That's what she said. Yeah. And even you, you, that's the same thing also at the, at the college. I I teach at the college, and so so only uh, there is a, uh, just a couple of weeks ago there was an art um, uh, art book fair. It was just called Unlimited Edition, and, and it's one of the biggest uh, art book fair in Korea. And it really uh, sells lots of books. You know, when you go there, like all, all these like maniacs, like books, banya, aficionados, they come just in and they 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 buy like uh, lots of books actually. But it's really a kind of co close community only. It's a very rare uh, phenomenon as well. But inside this community, all people really like books. They, they design books, and they, they are all publishers and so on, just as you can see uh, at the art book fairs. But generally, in the general society, it's very um, hard, to see, uh, hard to say that Korea reads books very much. So I cannot really, it's very hard to point out one, uh, one single book or, yeah. But anyway, it, I mean, but most of my friends and, and um, most of my friends are actually from the publishing sectors as well, so they read a lot of books actually. They, they produce books as well. But um, if you go out of this circle, then it's really a new, new world. Oh, yeah. Questions also, what kind of literature is read nowadays? Are people reading stories? Yeah, sure, that? of course. Uh, there they, they are lots of, uh, it's also very popular to read uh, novels online as well. Uh -huh. And also, but you can get only very popular books, actually. So for example, if you want to go into nonfiction or more theoretical-based uh, books, then it's, it's rare, fi rare to find on online version. Yeah, I mean, rare to find the ebook version. So I mean, people read books, but uh, mostly, um, yeah, what was your question? I'm sorry. Um, what kind of literature? Oh, I mean, most of uh, the, the, the fiction is very popular, actually. Yeah. So f for those who read books, uh, fiction is very popular. <laughs> yeah. And especially uh, those by uh, young, um, uh, young female writers is very popular. Yeah. Like, like they had, it has the feminism I issues as well. And this is very popular in Korea these days. And, it, and one of the bizarre thing is also the readership is much more um, higher in, in female. <laughs> the email, so we, yeah, there's also one big difference in Korea. Mm. So uh, Kai, you were asking for uh, feedback on your focus on locality. Yes, yes. Okay. So um, I, I would say that um, the the charm, the verb mm -hmm. of all these these books that yours did, uh, uh, concentrating on local phenomena, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, is so is so uh, has such a deep impact yes. because it also serves as a metaphor for, for the world. Yeah, sure, that's I think right. That yeah, this is, mm -hmm. th this is uh, so we might not um, confuse the local phenomenon with the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because yeah. It, it just meets it meets mm -hmm. each other as, mm -hmm. as a, not only as a metonymy but also as a metaphor. Okay, okay, yeah. So I think it's very well chosen. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible to study book design in South Korea? To study? To study book design. Oh, sure, of course, yeah. There are like book design courses as well. And I was also trained as a, uh, in a um, non-institutional um, class uh, as a book designer as well. So um, people uh, can, can also learn book design at uh, art colleges. So my partner, he teaches at the, at, the, at the university, and he's a book designer, and he teaches book design at the college as well. So, but it's not, but once you go get into the Department of Visual Communication Design, it's not like a must <coughs> track. So you can either choose into UI or UX, or you can even, if you're more uh, fond of the books or uh, typography or 
um, yeah, of editorial design, then you, you can choose uh, one of, or two classes related to book design. Yeah. So, and also there are like um, classes uh, going on outside of the college as well. So you can choose the private lessons. I, I mean, I mean, um, uh, lessons run privately as well. It's also available. Yeah. Yes. What are the main differences in book design between Korean book design and Swiss book design? Also? Oh, that's also a very broad uh, question, I guess. <laughs> uh, because um, historically, says it's also a very complicated story because the Korean book design does not have a history yet. There's not a single book written on Korean book, system, book design. I mean, there is one, but not from the viewpoint of a designer. So it has to be written, actually. Um, and, it, and that book, which was published, um, is, uh, covers only to the, to the early 80s. So the, the contemporary scene is not covered at all. And from the middle 2000s, lots of um, young graphic designers have uh, studied abroad and came back to Korea and they were heavily influenced by Western design as well, like Swiss, Dutch, and American. And so there is this kind of mixture of um, Western influence and Orient Korean influence, which you can also trace uh, back uh, in book design or in graphic design. Uh, but um, I, I think these days it's very hard to tell the difference actually. But before the 80s, and if you go uh, to the past, like uh, until the 90s and 80s, and there's uh, still the big difference between the Western or Swiss or European book style and Korean. So uh, it's, 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 it has to be another lecture, I guess, <laughs> to, to answer that question, actually. Yeah. Or I can, yeah. I mean, if you have any other questions, then I can show you some other, like, um, mm, um, uh, oh yeah, that, that, that's right. Um, um, with, um, uh, one of the books will be published very soon in, at the end of, the, uh, of this year. And if you uh, get the copy of that book, then you can see how, uh, how the contemporary book design looks like, you know, because there will be 10 book designers, young book designers will be interviewed and they're gonna show off their books, book design as well in the book. So, but it's really hard to tell what the differences will, really is, yeah. And it also has to do something more with, with the circumstance, or circumstances in what kind of environment, what kind of settings they work, you know, how they actually work with the uh, editors and with the uh, um, photographers. And this is also um, quite um, different or from, I guess, can be different from European settings, I, I, would, I would guess, yeah. But can you mention just big art one? Big difference? Big difference. <laughs> one feature, one element. Oh, but I, but it's, it's hard to tell the difference actually. I, I would say there is no difference in a way, probably. I mean, the, the only difference would be the using Hangul, <laughs> <laughs> the Korean alphabet. They, that makes the difference. But the way the style or the way they use colors or the layout could be not very different, maybe. But it, once you see, oh, oh th th this looks like very Korean, then maybe it comes from the, from the typography and from the, especially from Korean alphabet, I would say, yeah. I think uh, Korean alphabet, yeah, Hangul, <laughs> would be a huge difference, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Any more questions? If not, if it's not the case, then I would like to thank you once more for this lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you.